Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we're looking at the Noctua NH-D12L Chromax Black CPU Cooler and I've got on the test bench. Let's get through the video. Okay then, so this is the Noctua NH-D12L Chromax Black. Big thank you to Noctua for sending this out for review. So let's have a look what comes inside the box. Now it comes with the accessory pack, which is like the one with the smaller version of this I had the other day. Right, so it comes with obviously Noctua's uh, very good quality manual. It gives you every bit of information you need how to install it with LGA and with AM4 and AM5. So in terms of accessories, it comes with the Intel bio, which is parts. It comes with an in, more Intel parts. Then it comes with the Intel back frame. Then it comes with, oops, put that over there. And of course, then it comes with these, which these are for AM5, because it does support AM5. This is like an offset. And then of course, then comes the AMD parts. Comes with uh, different mount in for Intel then of course then it comes with this then which is a knock to a sticker which you can put on your case comes with the thermal paste very good thermal paste comes with a noise reducer I believe that's what it is yeah low noise adapter and then of course then it comes with their own little their own version of a screwdriver so yeah Let's open the box, put the accessory back now, and take a look at the cooler itself. Exactly the same packaging as the previous cooler I looked at from Noctua. So, these open out like that, just like that. Ooh. Right, okay, I'm already a fan. Oh, wow. So this is essentially a bigger version to the one I had. Ooh. Now, right, I have to give it to Noctua. They do make absolutely gorgeous air coolers. This is stunning. I really do prefer the Chromax versions. I don't, I'm not a big fan of their uh, urinate beige color, but uh, that's just me personally. And uh, this looks absolutely amazing. So let's get this installed and get it to test. Okay, so this is the Noctua nhd 12 l and this is the fan speed at 50 percent as you can hear barely hear it and this is 100 percent fan speed yes you can hear it but it's not really that loud. Right then, so when it comes to the thermals, now I've done four separate tests. I've done the 5900X out of the box settings, also PBO. Then I've included the AM5 7900 at stock settings with no PBO. Then I've enabled PBO so then you guys can get a rough idea of how this actually performs. So the 5900X with zero changes in the BIOS it was running 140 watts which is the standard so for Cinebench R23 the idles are 33 celsius with a max of 66 Blender Classroom the idles are 33 celsius with a max of 63 Blender BMW the idles are 33 celsius with a max of 61 and 3D Mark CPU test the idles were 33 celsius with a max of 64 celsius so the 5900X with PBO enabled. Now it did reach up to 190 watts during this test. So if the maxes are very high, what I will say is it did not thermal throttle during the tests. So for Cinebench R23, the idles were 33 Celsius and the max of 90. Blender Classroom, idles 33 Celsius, the max with a 88 Celsius. Blender Classroom, the idles were 33 Celsius with a max of 88. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles are 33 Celsius with a max of 76 Celsius. 
Okay, so for the 7900, uh, 7900, sorry, out of the box, standard, so all it draws is 90 watts. For Cinebench R23, the idles are 30 Celsius with a max of 56. Blender Classroom, idles 30 Celsius again with a max of 55. Blender BMW, idles 30, max at 55. And 3D Mark CPU test, idles at 30 Celsius with a max of 67 Celsius. Right, so, the 7900 with PBO enabled, what I will say is the CPU did start losing power draw. That's because the clock started going down. But what I will say is the CPU from Hardware Info, it did not thermal throttle. It didn't say in the actual software that the thermal throttle had happened. So just bear that in mind when I give you these results. So the idles are 36 Celsius in Cinebench R23 with a max of 95 Celsius. Blender Classroom, the idles are 36 Celsius with a max of 93. Blender BMW, the idles were 36 Celsius with a max of 90. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles were 36 Celsius with a max of 94. Right, so look, you saw the unboxing, you've also seen and heard the thermals. Now, yes, the thermals are very high, but they did not exceed the overall limit of these CPUs. The limit for the 5900X is 90, well, I believe it's 85 or 90 Celsius, and the 7900 does have a like high temperature of 95 celsius now from reading and looking online the both cpus running at that type of uh temperature is normal obviously with ryzen it is normal they are generally when it comes to like full core loads and stuff like that they are generally they do generally run hot now of course with noctua they don't use a tdp rating for their coolers it's because with tdp they generally with um brands they generally go with the tdp when it comes to the cpus that are used so it's not really a very good indicator but what they actually use is is called nspr which is essentially not to a standardized performance rating now they do have a list of compatibility when it comes to these coolers for the cpus now, even though the CPUs hit a very high temperature, they still did not thermal throttle. So, for the for this cooler, which is a 120, which is rather small, it's not the biggest cooler in the world, but I personally think it did perform well, considering that I've had both of these CPUs running at their highest temperatures with AIOs this did handle it with no problems but what i will do is i will put the link for the compatibility list down below and not to his website because they do their own in-house testing and if you need to know anything about intel don't ask me i can't really tell you i don't use intel to do any benchmarking i'm primarily only using amd they do have a list of what the coolers they've performed themselves in in-house benching what they are capable of so make sure you hit down in the description go to that link and see if it will work for your cpu other than that when it comes to the noise it's not that loud it obviously you can hear it but it does come with a noise reducer inside the box so that's okay of course when it comes to compatibility not to a unknown to have the best compatibility for every single socket they have it all the way back down to the pentiums so that isn't a problem of course with their new cpus they have updated the mountain it is you can either do an offset or a normal mountain which generally for am4 you're better off going with the offset because generally the cpu tends to pop out the socket that's one of the issues with am4 but of course you're not going to get that with am5 but other than that the acoustics the overall look and aesthetics i like the black aesthetics i don't like not to as general color scheme the beige i'm not a fan of that but i do like the chromax black versions of their coolers so 
yeah, look, I hope you enjoyed the video. A big thank you to Knock to it again. And as always, don't forget to subscribe because I've got oh, I've got so much stuff coming, so much stuff coming here. I've been it's been confirmed with Thermal Right that they are sending me stuff for review. So subscribe for that. And as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and week ahead of you. I will see you next week in the next one. So yeah. This is Rich for Welsh Tech. Good. Bye.